The subversion version control system that we've just discussed is an example of a centralized revision control system where there is one lo central location, one database server that stores uh, the entire revision history and therefore there's always agreement between all the participants what's the latest revision of something. But the centralized approach also has a couple of problems. It creates a central point of failure and it requires online connectivity. For example, whenever you want to make a commit in Subversion, then you also have to establish a network connection to your repository. Um, a more evolved uh, revision control, family of revision control systems are so-called distributed revision control systems that do away with the single central repository. So everyone has their own copy of the repository and they just um, mutually synchronize with each other every now and then whenever there is a uh, connectivity. <clears throat> and that has a number of example, uh, a number of advantages. For example, um, you could say it's sort of more democratic. There is not one entity who has control over everything and could potentially manipulate the uh, revision history. Everyone has their own copy and uh, therefore there's more accountability. Um, because each uh, participant has a local copy of the entire revision history, there are much better tools available for browsing that revision history because if the re complete revision history is available on the local disk, it's far easier to access than if it could only be retrieved via network connectivity. Also, if you uh, commit something and upload a commit to another site, in distributed revision control systems, these are separate actions. So you can make a number of commits just to create for your own workflow snapshots where, for example, you're about to delete some code that you just wrote, maybe first make a commit such that you have a backup copy of what you're about to delete. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean that each of these uh, individual commits is something that you already want to show to other people, therefore, it can be quite useful if the publishing of a, a new finished update of your project and uh, just making an internal snapshot are separated. It also allows you to create these commits offline if you're sitting with your laptop on a train. Um, <clears throat> the subversion uh, revision control system that we've discussed, it mainly has one single linear branch of uh, revisions and uh, there isn't really any explicit support in the database structure for creating branches other than the naming convention that if you want to create a branch, a sort of sideline development, you make inside the repository a copy and then you work on that copy and then somehow you have to merge that uh, back later. Uh, later. In distributed version control system, creating branches and merging branches are built-in facilities that are uh, very quick and easy to use and that are basically used all the time. Whenever you want to contribute something to a project, it is common practice that you always first create your own branch. And when you've tested your own branch, then you ask for that branch to be merged back into the main line of the project. And you can also have branches that aren't visible to other developers uh, because creating a branch like creating a commit is a local activity and then pushing that branch to other servers is a separate step. Because uh, you have so many branches and you don't have this central entity that could give uh, unambiguous names to uh, commits like in subversion where each commit is just enumerated with an integer number, you need a different revision identifier and in distributed revision control systems this is normally done with a cryptographic hash value. So the entire state of the file tree is converted into a long number, typically 20 bytes long, and that uh, number is chosen such that it's computationally infeasible to come up with two different file trees that would map to the same number. That's the whole point of a uh, collision-resistant 
uh, secure hash function. We'll talk about more of this in the cryptography course later. So overall, <clears throat> these distributed version control systems have become uh, very powerful, uh, very popular. Um, they are uh, very flexible, but they are also quite a bit more difficult uh, to use. There are many more operations that you can do. And this is all due to the fact that you're operating on a graph of revisions rather than on a linear history. There have been a couple of revision control, distributed revision control systems, uh, Mercurial, Bazaar, Git. Um, Git is the one that has become most popular. It's sort of the, the main survivor of this category of software. Uh, it was created in a uh, bit of an act of emergency by Linus Torvalds in 2005 to manage the uh, Linux kernel. The Linux kernel developers had a <clears throat> uh, license to use a commercial distributed revision control system, but uh, that didn't work out. And then on quite short notice, uh, Linus had to develop his own version, uh, his own revision control system, and Git was the result. So it's used by a very large number of open source projects. It's supported now in many free and commercial development environments, any major IDE um, editor or so has built-in support to interface with uh, Git. There have uh, sprung up a number of websites that uh, provide as a service to host source code for a community of developers and users. And there have been a number of these. There have previously been ones like uh, SourceForge that used Subversion but the most popular ones now are all using uh, Git and GitHub and GitLab are uh, two particularly prominent examples. GitLab, by the way, is a uh, web software that's also uh, freely available that you can host yourself. And uh, the university operates, for example, a, a GitLab instance at gitlab.developers.camagag. Git was designed to be able to uh, interface with subversion repositories. So there's a, a plug-in module for Git available called Git SVN. And you can easily migrate subversion repositories into Git repositories, but you can also use Git as a subversion client. So you can create a, a Git mirror of a subversion repository that maintains all the metadata that's needed in order to uh, migrate commits that were made in Git uh, back into Subversion. What Git ultimately does is it archives uh, snapshots of your working directory uh, file tree. These snapshots are called commits. It does not make any attempt to record what editing operations you have made. So I mentioned <clears throat> previously that Subversion, for example, distinguishes between deleting a file and then adding a new file, uh, and that this is treated by Subversion differently from just replacing the content of a file, and that uh, Subversion keeps track of whether files have been uh, renamed or um, similar tree operations have been performed. Uh, Git doesn't attempt to do this. If Git discovers that a file has been uh, moved around, this is really just for internal efficiency reasons. It will try to reference the content of the old file if it sees a significant uh, overlap in content, but it doesn't actually keep a record of the fact this file has been moved from here to here. So it's really a series of snapshots rather than a series of edit operations that are being Archived. And each of these uh, snapshot of your working tree state is called a commit. And <clears throat> these commits form a directed acyclic graph in the repository. So we have here, for example, one example state of a Git repository where we have an initial commit and then someone has made some changes, added some files that led to a new commit and then another commit and another commit uh, and a linear series of commits would work quite similar 
as we've seen in subversion. But then you can also attach to uh, commits a name and these are known as tags. And you can also uh, branch. So you can have a multiple commits that start from the same uh, base commit here. Then we branch off into different versions. And then we can also record that we have merged branches back together. So for example, um, this, no, this commit here has two children. That's the origin of our new branch. Whereas this here is the end of this branch because here we have uh, merged together. So this commit here has actually uh, two parent nodes. This is just to indicate that it is meant to represent the uh, continuation of both of these lines of development here. And how do you typically use branches? Um, you usually have a main branch where the uh, main development happens. So the uh, the head of this main branch is what the team should consider the uh, the latest version that's shared between everyone. And then <clears throat> uh, some of the uh, commits from the main branch uh, will become releases. So you tag them. For example, this year was release 1.0 that went to the customer. And then uh, you may get bug reports on that release and you may want to do a bug fix update that doesn't change anything other than fixing the bug. And for that, you can have a separate branch on commits on that branch here will receive the bug fixes. Of course, the bug fixes you also want to then merge back into the main line. <clears throat> so we have here two types of so-called refs. A ref is just a reference to uh, a commit and um, a tag is a reference to a commit that is not intended to move. You just give it a human friendly name rather than the long uh, 40 digit or 20 uh, byte uh, hexadecimal uh, hash value. Uh, whereas <clears throat> a branch head is also a ref but whenever you point, uh, whenever you commit a new version that has this version here as a parent, then the branch head will automatically uh, move forwards. So the branch heads indicate where the next commit on that branch uh, would go. And then there's also a ref called head that is indicating which branch do you currently have uh, checked out, which is the branch that you're currently working on, which is also indicated here by this uh, yellow circle. So again, in a bit more detail, because this is important uh, terminology and uh, without understanding the terminology, you will struggle quite a bit with the uh, Git man pages. Uh, a commit is a saved snapshot of a project, tree of files and directories. And the data associated with a commit is obviously uh, the content of all the files, the names of all the files, some of the metadata of the files, like whether a file has been uh, tagged as executable in the file system, but also metadata outside the file system. Uh, a commit contains a pointer to one or in the case of a merge, uh, several parent commits. It contains uh, a date of the commit. It contains an author of the commit. In fact, it has um, two fields for authors. You can distinguish in Git between the author of the commit who actually uh, wrote the whatever is behind the commit, the content changes, and the committer, which may be uh, a separate person. Uh, this comes mostly from the days when uh, it was still customary to send uh, commits via email around and someone uh, wrote a uh, change, submitted a patch file, and then someone else actually made the git commit in order to integrate this into a line of development. Uh, but today, mostly the author of the commit and the, and the, the, the author and the committer are usually the same person. They may not be in the case of merges. And similar to in Subversion, there's a descriptive text 
uh, associated with each uh, commit. And the commit itself is written down, the, the identifier is 40 hexadecimal digits to produce the 160-bit uh, string that is the output of the SHA-1 uh, collision-resistant hash function. And <clears throat> tags and branches I already uh, mentioned um, are separate objects in the repository consisting of a tuple of a string, a descriptive uh, text, and a commit number, the relevant uh, 40 hexadecimal digits. And the only difference between the two is that a branch moves if you make a commit uh, to a branch, whereas a tag stays where it is. Um, the default name of the uh, branch when you create a new empty repository and um, then one default branch is created for you and that name used to be master but then there was uh, recently a bit of an outcry that the word master is a bit politically incorrect because it has connotations with uh, slavery and the use of the word master has been gradually phased out from computer science. This is, I think, probably more understandable in uh, terminology like a master-slave protocol or a slave replica, um, where the, um, the connotation to the slavery is quite obvious, whereas uh, there is no slave in Git and therefore uh, I'm not entirely sure it's justified to say that this has some, something to do with slavery. But the train has been set in motion. It has now been decided that the new uh, name of the default branch in future is going to be main rather than master. So don't be surprised if you find it called main in newer repositories and master in older ones.